So you've got to the point in your Rust server where you want to set up automatic server wipes. Thankfully with Pine Hosting Panel you can do this super easily in our schedules section. All you have to do is head over to the schedules tab on your Rust server. From here you have two options. You can either click on create schedules or you can install one of our pre-made templates by just clicking view templates. From here you'll see a bunch of scheduled templates obviously but we're looking for the Rust Force wipe or Rust Weekly wipe. There might be a few other examples as well that you can use. So on the right here, we have the Rust Weekly Wipe. This will automatically wipe your Rust server. It'll generate a random seed. It'll send an announcement to your Discord server and boot the server every Thursday at 12 UTC. Obviously you can change all these things and I'll show you how to do that shortly. But if you wanna go with a weekly wipe that just happens every week at the same time, this is the schedule you can configure. The more advanced one we have over here is the Rust Force Wipe. For the more experienced Rust players, you'll know that Face Punch updates Rust every first Thursday of the month at about 6 p.m. UTC. So what the schedule will try and do is automatically shut down your server just a few minutes after that. It'll shut down the server, generate a new seed for you, announce to Discord, obviously wipe the server and boot the server back up just after the Rust Force Wipe so your players will be ready to get on right away. Obviously you can adjust this if you don't like it, but this is a good place to start. So we're gonna go with this one. Click on configure, you can change the name if you want to or read the description but otherwise just click on create schedule. Now this is where our schedules page does get a bit advanced, but I'm gonna try break everything down to explain what it does. Once you learn our schedules page, you can do a lot of powerful actions with it. So it's a good idea to practice it when you have some free time. So to begin with, we're going to click on edit. That's the most important button. And I'll break down the actual logic behind when the schedule runs. So to begin, we've got obviously the time and UTC at the top right, our name for the schedule, which you can set to whatever you would like. And then we've got when the schedule will run. This text here is in human readable text, obviously, so you can read it just as you normally would at five past 6 p.m. between days one and seven of the month. So essentially this is cron job syntaxing over here. And what we've set is that on the 1800th hour at five minutes past, so five past 6 p.m. on day one to seven of the month, on any month of any week. You can turn on this cheat sheet over here if you'd like a better understanding of how crons work. We then have this toggled, obviously. This can only run when the server is online. There's no point in doing it if your server is not even on. And then we have conditions. This is where it gets a bit tricky. What we've got selected here is day of the week. So day of the week, Thursday. So what the schedule is going to do before the condition is at five past six on day one to seven of the month. So if it's the first all the way to the seventh of the month, it's gonna run the schedule. But because we've added a condition here, it won't let the schedule continue running if it's not a Thursday. So it's gonna check for the day of the week. So making the cron run on the 1st to the 7th at this specific time and checking for the day of the week ensures that it will only run and complete all the tasks on the first Thursday of the month, because obviously there can only be one Thursday between the first and the seventh. It can be quite a bit to wrap your head around, but that's why we've created these templates. Obviously you can just follow this template directly, or if you get stuck, you can open a ticket with our team and we'll be happy to explain it to you. But generally you can leave this all as is and just click save changes. Now this is where it starts to get important is the new task. Obviously if you wanna add your own task, you can go ahead and just add some here and you can drag and drop to move them around if you wanna shuffle the order. So let's begin from the top. The first thing the server is going to do is it is going to send a command. This is just going to say server wipe will begin in one minute. This just broadcasts to the whole server. You can remove this obviously, or you can edit the text to something else if you'd like to. Then next up, we have send power action. As you can see here, this one has a time offset of 60 seconds. So we said that the server wipe will begin in one minute and then we waited 60 seconds. You can obviously adjust this to be a bit longer if you want to give players more of a warning. Then after the 60 seconds passes, it will send a power action which stops your server. Sometimes if you have quite a big server with a lot of plugins, we suggest making it terminate the server rather, but I've left it a stop for default as that gracefully shuts down the server. Right after that, we have the rust wipe. So this runs five seconds later. This just ensures that the server has shut down properly. And from here, you can obviously toggle things if you'd like to disable certain things or enable certain things. Generally, you're gonna wanna wipe everything. So this will clear the whole world. This will clear all player data, so like the inventories, and it'll clear all blueprints as well. So if you wanted to save blueprints for whatever reason, you can just turn that off. And then one of the more important things, obviously, for your Rust wipe is to change the map. So what we do here is we set a startup variable. Setting a startup variable is obviously these variables for your server over here. You don't just have to set a world seed for the wipe. For example, you could change your server name if you wanted to pre-program in a new name. If you wanted to pre-program in a new name for your wipe, you could go ahead and set a server name. You could change the world size, for example. You could even change your Archon password. There's a lot of different things you can pre-program into the schedule, but generally people are just gonna wanna change the seed of their map. And then in the actual value, if you have a specific seed you want to set, you can go ahead and just type in the seed number here. But we also have a variable that if you type exactly like this, will automatically generate 
generate a rust seed so this will be a totally random rust seed obviously if you want to set a specific map it's a good idea to go in and set your seed in advance and then finally five seconds after all of that's done we start booting up the server this is similar to how we shut it down we wait five seconds and then we send a power action to start the server and then as we start the server, we send a Discord webhook. This is a basic webhook. All it does is says the server has just wiped, get on and play. One thing to remember, obviously, is you need to set your own webhook URL. We just leave a default one over here, but you're going to have to go into Discord, create a webhook for whatever channel you'd like it to go to, paste the URL in here, and then whatever message you send will be sent to your Discord. Obviously, if you don't use Discord or you don't need it, you can just delete it and then your schedule will be ready to go. I hope that covers everything for the rust wiping schedules. Obviously, this is quite a lot of information to take in. So if you ever get stuck, feel free to open a ticket with our support team and we'll be happy to assist.